Hello. Uh, so it's my pleasure to welcome you all to Readings in Contemporary Poetry at DIA. Uh, my name is Megan Whitco. I am an assistant curator here, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you all. And I also want to extend a really warm welcome to our two poets for tonight's reading, Alan Bernheimer and Jean Day. Thank you both for coming all the way from the Bay Area to be with us this evening. Um, I also want to mention that we have some new publications by Jean and Alan for sale up front, and we also have uh, a few selected titles um, from some of the readings earlier in this season still available up front. So if there's anything you missed at a prior reading this season, please just inquire with the staff up there and they'll be happy to help you. Uh, we would also like to thank the Levy Gorvey Gallery, who provides major support for readings in contemporary poetry. And additional support is provided by public funds from the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs, as well as our media sponsor, which is the Brooklyn Rail. And lastly, we want to thank Brooklyn Brewery and Dia's staff, uh, particularly Andrea Avila and Max Tanone. So tonight is our final reading of this spring series. And in fact, it's gonna be a bit atypical uh, because unfortunately, Vincent Katz, who is the longtime curator of readings and contemporary poetry is not able to be here tonight because of a scheduling conflict. But we are tremendously fortunate to have two of our prior readings in this series, Anne Stevenson and Costas Anagnopoulos, who will be introducing uh, Alan and Jean this evening by reading introductions that Vincent wrote for both of them. So it's the best of all possible situations tonight. So uh, without any further ado, uh, Costas is gonna come up and introduce our first speaker for this evening. Thank you. Can everybody hear me? Oh, okay. Jean Day is an editor, a poet, and a union activist. Her books of poetry include A Young Recruit, Roof Books, 1988, The Literal World, Atlas, 1998, Enthusiasm, Odes and Odium, Adventures in Poetry, 2006, Daydream, Litmus Press, 2017, and The Triumph of Life, Insurance Editions, 2018. Her work has appeared in many anthologies, including the recent Resist Much, Obey Little, Spite and Dival, 2017, and Out of Everywhere Two, Linguistically Innovative Poetry by Women in North America and the UK, Reality Street, 2015. Day lives in Berkeley, where she works as managing editor of Representations, an interdisciplinary humanities journal published by the University of California Press. The last poem in Jean Day's book, Daydream, begins, back to the oak, rising like a mast, radically out of true, to scratch Orion's belt in the do-nothing days before school starts. There are many such moments of intense specificity in Day's poetry, in which each line seems to shift or sway in a divergent direction, and yet, like the swaying of a ship, the whole maintains an affecting sanity. Here we have an oak likened to a mast, an odd reversal, and somehow being radically out of true makes it true as well. Then she typically deflates the whole situation, here by characterizing the last days of summer as do-nothing days. A number of her poems seem to reference past situations, but Day's strict avoidance of narrative keeps the reader focused on the present need, which keeps us focused on her sense of playfulness and language. Not infrequently, this playfulness is evinced by recourse to words from a language other than English, in her more recent poems collected in The Triumph of Life, Day adopts a more playful tone. Even the look of these mostly one-page poems, short lines and energetic jumps across the page, invites an excited response. 
Here's a passage from Oh My Darling. Our ships are captured. Write me the blow by blow. Allegory's okay. Just don't make me fuck the captain. Amazingly, from this point, in just a few lines, Day manages to land in a non-ironic, open-hearted place by the end of the poem. Her poem does just that. It shifts and subverts your expectations, first one way, then another. You are left with a puzzled smile on your face, wanting more. And now you have more. Please welcome Jean Day. I want to thank Costas, not just for that introduction, but for publishing The Triumph of Life. And I want to thank everyone for coming. The Triumph of Life is in three sections, the first, first of which is called Dixit. And the first poem, all of the poems are titled, the first poem is The Cardinal's Bald. Turtleneck, dead. Summer rain, gone to town. Morning, no solution. Some of us want to change the world, others just to live it down. When it's time to go, come back and tell us. We can see through the act, but we're not magicians. Like, goodbye if I don't see you. So I'm not going to read the entire book. Uh, and the book isn't very long. I'm going to read the last two sections. The, the, the book begins with a, a fairly, uh, fairly personal um, location in a visit to my family. And the second two sections open out um, into the world. So the second section is formal feeling. Muscle memory. Where is my guide? It's true. No one asks for what they don't yet want. It's the flathead screwdriver that's never around when you need one, stupid. The executioner has her own needs, OK. But this is not just display. Hang around if you don't believe me. If night gets any older, Marry me, but don't keep me waiting. I've got a lot of work to do to be a lesson to unload on the membership. I am no rest for the lamb I have adopted to undersign the son of newness. Dear one, the left arm aims the right fires at the masterpiece we've made of the errand. By dint. Because of his fervent valley, I was scarred for life. The little craft plied waves of grass regardless of its dimpled surface. And you think you can bring that dead deer in here to exaggerate the mood even further? And now I hunt the echo. Neither in the world nor out, after the fact, but before the chores of the clown chorus, a drink of water tempts fate, conditions thought in terms pro proper to music. The slap in the face you probably asked for, going down like a shot. But I have chosen seven straight nights of unexpected drink at the sink of raging snowmelt, not her intelligent human sister. Nomination, don't ask. When the time comes, you aren't listening. I'm serious, not dead. If someone, something, this or that, causes, leads to, gives or takes a inch or foundling in a basket, we call her exactly. We call her efficient. We call her in and call her that is. Foot soldier, 
The winter closures were hard on caregivers and workaholics who saw themselves alike hard as cards tipped, like Fabriano out of Aingr, with mud from the bottom of the bay. Look out, birds. Here comes the splat dark season. I am a maniac mom in minus mode. Never too old to schlep your shit. Never too cold for a noogie. In the event of capsize, Jacob came to look at my fan. Turtle soup was on his mind, but his eyes did not align. On this fact, I can only ponder, hope he can fix the fan. In the bayou, nets caught on what they thought a stump. Even bologna loaf can go in a gumbo, Jacob opines, but no stump. Plinth, no going back now, no writing any reason, though I stand exposed, if not corrected. As if itself be held, the organ of sights sewn shut by you, whose stitches are too true to count. Could not speech be the free of seam then, without such evidence? Bad night, no doubt. Holding all the balls, balls afloat is harder than it looks, without fingers to apply. But who asked you? Wherewithal. The time it takes to populate the shatter zone is underfunded, yet you are welcome on my land. Pen easy in the hand of cursive and native to the heart attack. Having learned nothing quite yet, but stranded still on a wave of laziness. Every last one of us. Which is to say, pancakes on Saturday only fortify the TIA or occupation of Sunday by all who belong there. I was born bored, said Flaubert. But that was material for another novel. Me, I had a perverse fondness for flatness. Pretty sure my time had come and gone. I signed on the next departing steamer, following the nemos of knots and stuck in a corner compartment. Much was said from the top bunk. Mannerism. What if distemper's nuts are already cracked? Destination played. If your head's so far up your ass you can't see Kansas, well, the logic of dreams never added up to intel internal to where I stand, foe in taxidermy, real in Missouri, glum in pants and patent leather boots. Where'd you say the exit was, to wit? In Ferguson, dead center. The raw young men, without, within, and therefore because and after, must learn to live in their brother's trues, mother's swifter keepers. The ubiquitous stick swings both ways, to the orange of the vegetable, or so much to the grave. Black Friday is a feature of class. The mistake is thinking myself not part of the picture. Went down to the crossroad. We are each other's intelligence, but nobody knows me around here by my allegations. Now so low to the line, only bugged out eyes divine, a lay of land in status quo, a maw's a maw for awe, so weaned away from complete disclosure. Nobody here and nothing to eat anywhere. What right do you think sticks to a stick waved in the air? Being one in a long history of ramps on and off, departs in a canoe, so the marchers go we on in coils as brooms and bones bend before thought turns us back on being one, helping not 
even the tooth of her who said she wouldn't snore, of course, or come again as a racehorse, name of wretched. Road hard, put up wet. Get out of the pan if you don't like the heat. Helicopters, out tonight, stir up the stars and watch the red and black go bareback at who are riders and what snakes not all tail. Call me disenfranchised. These poems just write themselves. The if clause, where we must part if worlds, oh, whither, away. But stay, if what you say is true research, then there we go again, unstopped if you are who you say and not a phantom, if I am all things being equal, and only if we understand ourselves to be pointing to a legitimate watering hole in the wilderness. Turtles expected. The money on the walls at Cabbage Key asked only to be left in memento mori. Would we hide out there to wait as the burrow awaits the shell, dear December and dear all, or a son leaves home to be leaving? If the amber in the ale's just syrup, let the leather of your hands salute instead of speaking. Sun goes, too and too young to be sorry for so much Whitman. Morning, pleasant, forest, fragrant. It was theirs to begin with all along. I meant the infundibula form of the mind, brisk and cool, with a whisk and tool. What then? As though we feared the facing page turned neither toward nor against us. Unsame, at any speed. Novelty comes along by way of alienation. As a welfare case, say, your termination goes a little off the rails. When a toilet overflows in a messy dream, there's hell to pay. Quickly fades away to know cock robin's nests, an island in the eel, fruitless. Come back to bed, as fact. Then bring your walker closer and tell me your pretty name. I don't know why the pure products of America should go crazy, but they do. Alive as wire in a backwater to which there's no boardwalk access or country gentleman to fill his suit to swing. It's crying time again. I can see that far away look in your eyes. This is the hour of lead. Correcting for salt, like leaves in a forest all dissimilar. Correcting for sugar, or the sunlit limits of the night. Now, about that drink with Caesar. Why not toast sunny austerity? Why not praise the bitter meal before we get down to eat? It would be easier to pretend we never go there, to the tablets or the poles, being ever dishabille all over the map. But this would leave us still farther behind, and deeper, I say deeper tangled up in shade. So the title of this uh, book comes pretty obviously from Shelley, uh, but the book is not about Shelley. It's more that um, the, the sense of Shelley's last poem started to, started to echo for me in the kind of progress of, of history that moves through his poem and also the way uh, famous people start coming into his poem, particularly Rousseau, who um, appears as something of a gnarly tree. <laughs> I thought you might like to know that. Um, the last section is called No Dice. They lock the door when they see us coming. Theirs is the generation of no hope whatsoever. What I know is what I know, nothing special. Take one waffle and put it on top of another, 
and watch the butter feel. What we mean is reproducing all over. I take the egg gingerly and enter. Cell block A. Not what you expected, but good enough to rise to the occasion, bowl or basin, or anal sun, as they used to say, though that was one for the books then held in the library of where I hatch my escape. The dummy is fled without fooling anybody. Night train, sad hair, soap, loaded, rocked gently. Nobody has good thoughts in the middle of the night. Why then should we be limited to experience? If the soundtrack simulates a real night ride, father, mother, nowhere to be seen. Against which no collar would be turned. So as to be amazing rather than irrelevant, the wren knows to fold in before we're poor again in our desert blind spot. So we're not birds, need rain, cannot quit while we're ahead. Catchment. Since we're not birds, not sudden, and all our lands are private, we have to plan ahead like turtles in sand, waiting for an apology. One pond for rain, one for retention. Two brains cleave to the curve around which we're pretty sure she'll be combing. Without Rousseau, her hair, we are unromantic, not sodden upon a rock, nor will we subside in the other room, figures of doom, if the present is our blind spot. Booties, what the occupiers keep. We hold on to everything. Elgin movement springs eternal from her head, an image of perfection still to come. Yet the wooden horse is all about not being nailed, souvenirless to her toes, those on which had lain our oysters. Who then are the enchanted people who can afford to live here? Bite the bullet. In the sexual sunrise of the enchanted nap, our lands were continual and continuous. Do me the honor of a quick escape. Do not pretend to be an animal, finger curled above your head. You know you are, now alone on earth. What Rousseau wants is a pity fuck. I could use one too. Let's take a break here and review. The sun is in the sky. Oh, sorry, it's reflection. Moon in another frame did and died, not to spoil the party. The car is fled. Over Pickleweed Marsh. And we are left unhandled. One's life either is or isn't critique underfoot. Some squidge on a continuum whose arms redden and break off when done, done. We exclude yet accumulate, the poem pretends. I can't get any more idiosyncratic and I can't get any less ash to soap and glass. Spring breeze knocks us off our guard. Warden, warden, listen to me. Have I not settled your great questions? Got work? A cow to drain into how your day chews up the register? Of all the places I've lived, some of them pretty charming, what's past stuck not to any emulsion. There was always the hole. Bluebird. Quick, look out for the blank brown fox whose shades of Vendelette. With us, he or she should technically be blue, not a fiction of good intention. The little dinosaurs sit with us, hard, postmodern. Whose invisible rain, 
her wings also missing, leaves us gasping in our attempt to be happy. Must I hold my horse against the upbraiding wind? It's nuts to ask to go to Mars, as if you already knew the moral of the story. But why not give it a try? Do not forsake me. As if the irreversible hadn't already occurred. Yet we set out hopeful, without resale, in close converse, in teacups sucked, quick to falls. Those were the days, obviously. If this you see, shut it down. Oh, my darling, our ships are captured. Write me the blow by blow. Allegories okay, just don't make me fuck the captain. It's time to unapologize for crushing Thumbelina's thimble. Go ahead, blow the whistle. Spring is here. And Pete, whose lung is leaf poised around a title. Were we to organize the forest, we couldn't in fact inhabit the unbearable division of labor. I'll take the colorful language, you the foundling kids. Never mind my shattered lips. Chantilly Lace. Never second guess the guards at the casino. Foot on throat, they just want to make you happy. Never mind, it's not a race. Presupposes goodwill of species, a nibble in a net, not we're in mourning and hot. We can't afford to live here. Think of us as a bunch of skeletons throwing back shots, bathing in dirt and liking it. I don't call that uninspired because just as often the voice says our glee is insincere or I can't hear the drums of the dreadful decades near enough to stick it out. Mayday. Just because you bear the tale of the lower orders doesn't mean you can't be trusted. When we were Europeans, we got paid in kind. We threw our caps in the air after nature. But I always happened to be at home when the plant blew. Night of the Living Dead. When we were Epicureans, we nailed up doors with kitchen matches against slow invader species, having taught English all our lives, only partly with our hands. Gripping the eyes as images slipped of skin, an actor's genius then, a hole was to dig out of, gamely hanging on to skinless, boneless chicken. The Bitch in the Storm, that's a, a genre of um, popular illustration in New England. The Bitch in the Storm matter-of-factly takes my hat upon arrival, rows out be beyond the chop, leaving me far behind, beefy and not at all well-dressed. The lighthouse, her house, irritates everybody and the grudging clouds tease out dry rain, a veritable downpour. Happy us who lick the salt off her foul-weather jacket pocket. Unforgettable, that's what you are. To tribal elders vast, in coupons cashed, as writing on the wall of clouds attests, pulling us against her last leg of rhythm, remembered as material, having said all along, I wish I had some dirt to eat right now. And I will just end with um, a beginning and an ending poem from um, a, a newer thing called The Night Before the Day on Which, uh, a section called the secret agent that um, bears some relation to um, Conrad's story, uh, but also has m even more to do with um, time as it's conceived in um, the William Kentridge uh, work, uh, whose name I can't remember now. 
uh, but he, he also deals with the, the Conrad uh, story. The secret agent, one begins already in error, even underground there is no plan. Leaving the tarmac, we remember to enter the plane through its nose. So the first poem is, having just eaten my instructions, I felt the difficulty of stepping out, or what would become of my twin Philander soon enough. Einsteinian, he is younger than ever, head over heels, even to the point of being in love. The bomb went off a little too soon. We threw everything there was into the black hole and made ourselves scarce. And then there's 30 some pages of kind of a travel log and hiding. The, um, that's two poems, which is where the 60s ended and the trouble began. You don't need me for your weatherman with son of Sam and Sam I am. If we are old, we are old. It's not our job to be happy. The earth from space looks little and hunted, played back to the exact dot where we are rewound around the neat trick of personation. Everything there was, is, and is still ticking. The Mickey in our drinks makes us forget knee plays and their plots when we rip the cloth from the tabletop without ruffling the leaves and glasses. Lovebirds are revealed, huddled underneath, hiding their naked faces. The sun is out only briefly. The double-sewn seam in the jeans opens up, releasing a billow of steam. We put our names back in the hat. We are our own ghosts. Thank you very much. Alan Bernheimer is the author of the poetry collections Cafe Isotope, The Figures, 1980, The Spoonlight Institute, Adventures in Poetry, 2009, and From Nature, Cuneiform, 2019, among others. Recent work has appeared in Across the Margin, Delineator, Equalizer, and Hambone. Born and raised in New York City, Bernheimer has lived in the Bay Area since the 1970s. His translation of Philippe Soupeau's memoir, Lost Profiles, Memoirs of Cuba, Cubism, Dada, and Surrealism, was published by City Lights in 2016. Alan Bernheimer has always liked to start in a normal zone and then pr proceed to manipulate normality in subtle ways using a musical dexterity to arrive at poems that are harmonious in tone and suggestive in imagery. His poem, Available Light, from his 1980 collection, Cafe Isotope, begins, You are all your friends have in common, just as coffee brings civilization to its day. There are several shifts within the small space of those two lines. Bernheimer's poems gather density on repeated readings. A sense of humor, always apparent, is revealed to be a kind of glue, keeping together a more serious project. That project is not somber, though. Rather, it is an elevated attempt to write lines of a certain airiness, which, through time, suddenly grab each other in an adhesion that reifies in front of the reader's eyes, like a puzzle snapping into place. In his most recent book, From Nature, published this year, Bernheimer focuses more on form. Many of the poems are in three-line or two-line stanzas. The accumulation is by shorter phrase, the effect more diffuse. It is almost as if the poet, confronted with the diffusion of time, is attempting to keep it together by means of form. Here is a typical flow. 
Words mean everything. Put skids under you, waiting for emptiness. To fill with thought, thought with words, would be, has been. There's an elegiac tone to some of these later poems, a softer look at once at what once made him smile. The smile is still there, but it's a melancholic smile. The intellect is the same that delighted then. It delights us now. Please welcome Alan Bernheimer. How's that for sound? Good? Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Vincent in absentia. Thanks, Megan and Max and the rest of the staff here. Since I heard Costas and Charles North read here together several years ago, I've always wanted to read at Dia. And so I'm very happy to be here tonight. I'm very happy that you came. From Nature, like Jean's book, is also in three parts. I'm going to read around in it uh, a little from each part. Breakfast. Forgetting words the moment you hear or read them is one way to avoid plagiarizing. But just keep their flavor and then try expressing that in your own words as if you could own words. You can't even keep thoughts from slipping away. They're the slipperiest of all the slippery things in life. The hotel elevator that rises way past the roof and slips across a higher landscape, a different neighborhood. Why not ask if any of these places will be open for breakfast? The truth about more. Everyone is an intellectual whose words can be exchanged for cash. Mothballs dissolved in vodka anesthetize the agent. Only the mercury is true. How can I believe in that social world of tone, metal and celluloid novelties? Philosophy should come out to play. A guy with imagination gets pictures in his head, like there's no tomorrow, a word that means itself. The red patches on black are visible as the whales tango through the lagoon. Many stars and ones perpetually shooting. Uh, and I owe the title uh, to a poet, Ali Warren, who's given it to me on long-term loan. Eyes have it for the dream sequins at weepy random lengths gone to, wasted years so close behind. Now, what about rhyme detection completes yourself by proxy? Identity parade in footloose stride. And already beans coming out of my ears don't show stored form warning. I've got all day with least astonishment. It's nothing to turn round and go back two or three miles to cross your T's. Everybody looks at the sky. Tell us about your loot. L-U-T-E, not L-O-O-T. <laughs> Decaf emoji. Have I lost my delighted attitude with telescoping pencils and recorded atmosphere? The shadows are having fun getting a hush on. Apologies for inconvenience, keeping dignity under hat, palpably concocted and tributary to the wind. It's anyone's guess swimming into sight at the heart sleeve club. While some goodwill minds patience, from a racing perspective, the scenery looks better without you in it faint mowing at the edge of sound. Fugitive thoughts struggle to divide the air, celery and violets, Sunday morning emptiness, whom fortune has not blessed still rages and weeps. History of happiness. 
Just did the math. Two bird's eye for me, living by wits. Miss out what's said. Travel size heartthrob. Gravity situation. Confess stupid alibis. Unemployed emotions keep healthy distance. Showy brushwork, rakish dogma, skirmish in the archives. Equanimity overrated, all puffed up. Homer at home. Sorry for what clumsy miscues put miles in air. Up for the count. Hero worship had a way with clouds. Call it a truce. Misery loves misery. Dispatch illusion units. What mood says, disappearing zeros, tiny white flecks, world's worst blank animal episode. Next undercurrent. Words mean everything. Put skids under you, waiting for emptiness, waiting for emptiness to fill with thought, thought with words, would be has been. Racking up karma. Knock the dents out for extra oomph. Every element, something to someone, smoke in the shade. Naughty or naugahyde. Spasms of youth, dead for a ducat. Curious gray eyes would be my department, touching another drop. People want to be spoken to as a snowflake. Settle down to business. Top dog hot tub party. Got the berg closed up. Author's compliments. Magpie fragment. Be a nuisance. The long meow. Twilight of the Trilobites. Where did existential leave its beret, attracting us like monks to fame? The world is run over by angry men with ambience units, tremors in the awning, extending ovals into space. Whatever intervenes is artistry. Someone says you have nice hands. Reality has a transparent center inside layers of shiny candor. The beach looks good today, like spraying ether, but your empty eyes see so many smoke rings. Futurama for Bill Berkson. The difference between truth serum and asterism, the dark of the matinee, and fathomably lovely dirigible shadow moving at dirigible speed across the 1920s Oakland Tribune facade a year ago today. Apartment life with caper delivery just around the cornice. Maybe monk in Oslo and elevator men at this remove. The next work is called Time Out of Mind and it has a, a epigraph from uh, E. Robert Kelly. When we watch the flight of a bird, a part of the flight seems to be occurring at the present instant, and a part to have occurred prior to the present instant. What sorts of things are instants of time? Are events metaphysically basic? If we live forever, would there be a sense of time? Is time fossilized in the structure of language? Can time be completely empty? Are events pairs of a sentence that is true? Is the present made out of time? Can folk reject time theory without changing the topic? Is time our escape from contradiction? Can events recur or persist? Why is no sense assigned to time? Must participants exist when writing events occur? Are more assumptions than needed to get the job done ontologically extravagant? Is time a manifold of metaphysically basic points? Are we ideologically committed to the present being special or specious? 
So Kelly was a 19th century uh, Boston cigar manufacturer who retired early and took up philosophy. Uh, he wrote a book called The Alternative, A Study in Psychology, and he's known, if he's known at all today, for having coined the term and the concept of the specious present, which, uh, as you may know, was picked up by William James, who knew Kelly's son and most likely got hold of Kelly's book as a result of knowing his son. Ibis in Egypt for Robert Harris. Put paper in the past like a fish at night, a huge circling above the polished Nile, softer water, closer shave, wiseness in the noise. Everybody's somebody's fool. Apologize for inconvenience. Before I forget flirtatious spaces and tales of place, dirty ice on the side. What's the matter with this line? Prehistoric peeps find middle ground and wallow in it. No better place for learning about stars than stir. It's not all damaged logic and inspiration at every breath. Protected witness for Aaron Simon. You want to look good in green your whole life, crisp and cryptic. Not a person who can't spin change or act like a pronoun any good at smiling. A little oblivion goes a long way with immense solos cluttering terrains, but current stuff is lots more fun. Too busy to be human, one more at a time. Celebrity alteration. Other people's wisteria fails to unlock past. So many lime-lit white walls. Even Pinkertons have to sleep. Problem is the material. Keeping self company fits a lot of descriptions. Emotional outcast, concourse of atoms. Hard to have posthumous fun. You people are filled with trace amounts of mystique. Shoot hooky for Jason Morris. Man talking to sky. What you gotta do, aim at the eyes. It is possible that suspense never ends. Make bed lie in it. No matter laughing. Everything but the molecule. People don't appreciate the substance of things. I look like someone you've met more in the past, wading through caftans as though hating it, who believe in misty ways would bet my depot or use much backup, long since lost the plot. The new sentience. It feels great being any place, replete with exterior decor, secret springs of action, head airing out inside scenery. Life's passage was never going to be fearless, an abundance of caution behooves not backing leg shows. You didn't have to be square to resist cubism. Every building claims it was a brothel. <laughs> we march monarchy carefully through the trepidation of society that passed on spools beneath, lunch for two, dinner for six, alive with pithful words and thrilling ones of swing. You need any help with the coffin, it's going to be feathery till she comes too. Seals sleeping. Seals sleep as they sink in the sea. Seals sleeping underwater, then waking up. How seals sleep with only half their brain. Seals sleeping stock photos. Half-awake seals help explain sleep disorder. How does SEAL Team 6 get to sleep? Seals sleeping between the rock, stock footage. Elephant seals sleeping, royalty free. Max ear seals earplugs. Crab eater seals still sleeping. Apnea ashore and at sea. 
Madness seals the deal for sleeping with sirens. Sleeper sharks snag sleeping seals. Diving seals and meditating yogis. Sleeping seals and stone chats. Nice marine seals on the snow in Antarctica. Seals, wall art, and home decor. I should have mentioned, yeah, I should have mentioned this first section is called Sleeping with Sirens. And the second section is called Butilities, and it's prose. So I'll read a few of those. The Scaffolding Patriarch. A signal for help draws a private pilot from her course. Weaving the plane through some tight city streets, I turn into one that is an impossible web of ironwork several stories high. To avoid a crash, I latch onto a piece and find myself standing up in some elaborate scaffolding that is just now being dismantled. All sign of the victim seems to have disappeared. The scaffolding comes down with the amazing speed of roustabouts pulling down a big top. And I see, now from the ground, that the efforts are directed by a young patriarch whose orders are keenly followed by the family squad. The key is a quickly locked or unlocked joining device that he adapted from the daffodil game of football. Everyone is astounded when he announces a street party to follow the completion of the work. Sulk. Playing Hamlet without knowing the lines, just slouching around disgusted in the corner of the court. Claudius sends over a copy of the script to me. Liberty. A sailboat cuts across a blue surface with a rectilinear grid of hemispherical depressions, the cusps between capped by white. In the background stands Liberty, mouth agape, dropping her book, torch tilted at a crazy angle. Ars Longa. Marcel Duchamp giving a talk, standing at a table on a loft floor in New York City. A man of 80, he is as dapper and fresh as a man of 30, dark hair and unlined face. Then I'm introduced to his father, a man who appears to be in his late 50s. <laughs> Butility. A visit to the aquarium with my father. There are three tanks. The first contains many small eight to 10 inch black and white fish that are emitting electric pulses registered on a voltmeter mounted next to the tank. The second contains a few medium sized fish that are producing a whistling sound that is audible from a small sonar speaker. The last contains one huge fish, a monster of the deep which apparently makes no signals. My father is peeved that I am slow at discerning the natural law that is exemplified by these displays. <laughs> Strangeness. Car window wipes of Managua cityscape spread out big sky Big structures, charm of utter strangeness, self-possessed, then a large and faceless institution lurking a few blocks off. I enter a second story restaurant where some writer friends have already sat down to lunch. Kit says the city has already ruined a number of poets. I ask who, and he names some acquaintances, including Bob Grenier, who he says has had many particular poems ruined by it. <laughs> there is some question of where to put the extra chair and we never make it to the food. The Characteristic Cafe. We decide to eat at the Characteristic Cafe and head uptown a few blocks, taking a ride on 50th. My father drives the car slowly through the mid-block arcade, suffused with a greenish half-light. Instead of the normal row of varied retail shop windows, this arcade is the well-known series of small lunch counters and soda fountains with 1920s demeanor, posters unmistakably of the era advertising ice cream and other treats. The Warren is deserted as on a Sunday, though we drive through the interior in tight turns, finally parking in one to walk out into a weed and rubble strewn lot to look for the cafe. 
The only relief on the flat horizon for several blocks is a partly dismantled one-story hub of what looks like a former large structure, like a food counter at a drive-in movie. Peering into its windows, you can't even tell it was a restaurant. We ask a few people if that was the old characteristic cafe, but they don't seem to understand the question. And the last section is called the Spoonlight Institute, which is a little confusing since that was the title of the book of mine that came out before this that contained a poem of that name, the title poem, but it was only half written at the time. And this book contains the full, the full poem, so I'm gonna read a little bit from the second half, which readers of the earlier book didn't get. And it's written in, in, uh, thir in sections of 13 couplets each. So I'll read three of them. Which three? These three. Do you not agree with that which I have said to you now? Or have the fantods run out of veins in the history of infinity? High winds may exist like a scratchy crystal set, and I know what's a yacht. Anticipation of outcome guarantees the absence of grace. Brightness has fallen from my interior air with false starts galore and imitation empathy for the ethereal hacker, sinking feeling to digital hugeness, angry and owl-shaped in the diaphanous mirror that undiscovers solitude in a crowd of countryside, an emotional chihuahua mincing perfectly toward nothing in particular, old men in old hats. I used to be contemplative, but now just complain and can't help pointing out what is hidden beneath things. I'm tired of pretending I'm not a bitch ass rock star from Mars, escaping from underneath the unanswering machine without philanthropic avenues and a deep passion for steam. Beauty operators command good money and tough is putting mildly the treatment you're going to get as authors in eternity. Where the weeds are. West eats meat. The ultimate tiara. But is the unironic vocative even possible today with cities measured in forgiveness? Music is among the better things, transparent little knobs on our temper while remembered dreams are reuptaken by the unconsciousness and forgotten, as it was the Indian manner to vanish into the landscape with a minimum of indolence, containers of American atmosphere shipping westward. Everything I feel is like a magnet. There is, this isn't the mother of all anything. Ineffable socialites are in me, playing for creeps, uh, I mean keeps and in syncretizing traces of individuality. There's no reason to bring the electrician in on our troubles once the museum is gone. Nostalgia, a sickness of the physical memory, until it isn't. Sorry, I'm trying my best. England without lettuces. <laughs> Tudor to the max. Kiss it forever goodbye. It's only the tango you love, hoping to make a visible dent unconvinced that nothing actually exists, kernel panic in the physics package, and no time to spare regarding second sight, a hair's breadth beyond the pale of negative concord. I've been getting ready to write this my whole life. Several acres of destination providing a limbo of contingency in the course of the day. My last passwords, nature's God, and just a couple of recent pieces. Infinite Martini for Tom Rayworth. I don't see it my way any sporadic weathery day while ideal numbers start their song. 
Help me convince them I'm human with ambages everywhere and unpersuasive penmanship. White telephone films in imaginary countries, electric permanent waving. A virtual world of broken links, smells like flowers, rhymes with air falling into place. Keep your constitution prepared. Don't forget to look up for the camera. I used to, oh, this is called Author Unknown. I used to be a know-it-all, but now a cloud of unknowing has settled in my psyche, and knowingness is less or more unsettling than getting used to forgetting apple, table, penny, dog, book, grass. So when you reach a certain age, as I have, the annual physical with the doctor is accompanied by a memory test because and in my doctor's office, the assistant uh, tells me three words, apple, table, penny. And then she asks me to draw the face of a, give me a pencil and paper, asks me to draw the face of a clock and make it say 1025 or something and do that. And then she said, okay, what are the three words? So being a wise ass, I come back on year number two and she says, I'm gonna tell you three words. And I say, oh, that same old apple, table, penny, huh? So of course she gives me three new words dog book grass, which I will, of course, give back to her next year. <laughs> 20 ways to lose your life. Another empress, box office poison, slow blind curve, just eat your batteries, blue ant war, powdered eggs, condense it out of the pen, depraved heart, lepton tan, chemistry set mixology, the central line, several days of orange cheese, pitiless jaw, flitcraft variations, mal de pays, epitaph addiction, devil in the decal, cutting room floor, trouble in paradise, the one you can't see coming. Flight risk for a Miles champion. My birds will twitter on the branch of other things, a therapy of what no laughing meter sleeps to forget. Why don't you go away and come back 10 years ago on the pajama plan? The pond is a regret, too much to dream. Almost everyone was someone's friend who does not exteriorize themselves. There is paper in the hat, mind behind face, illusion of being everywhere. Little birds breaking dry sticks. What is it with verbs? Place identity swims into sight, trying not to be careless. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>